one of the things I was trying to accomplish was how could I expand the tools to help other biology students use the cluster? Because in my experience, virtually all the bio grad students are running R, but very few of them ever run R on CARSI. And often it's they're using, they're, they're running code that makes a lot more sense on CARSI because they will generally just start a script and then leave their computer running for three weeks nonstop. And this is just generally accepted, but not the best way probably to use their computer when we have all these tools at CARSI. So one of the things I wanted to do was come up with like a quick bite to parallelize a lot of the R code because right now a lot of the packages that parallelize R code are kind of a mess. There's about like, I counted maybe like six or 10 different packages that, that exist. And they all work well for like one or two functions, but then if you needed to change how you're parallelizing, you couldn't, you would have to learn a whole other package to do it. So it becomes really complicated and a huge barrier, especially for people who just uh, have a script done and they just want to parallelize it. So because of all these issues with the syntax, they came up actually with a new package recently called Future. And Future is really interesting because it allows you to basically parallelize your code and then you can separately choose how you wanna parallelize it and it'll work across different platforms. And so the kind of slogan they write for is write once, work anywhere. And so that's really helpful for a lot of code and make it much more reproducible. And so they're able to do this by separating out like which first writing out which part you wanna parallelize and then resolving that later on. And so it allows you to just kind of write your code, have it set up how it's going to parallelize it and then execute it. So how it works is first like the user decides what kind of form of parallelization they want to do. And so that's totally separate from the parallelization process, then which part you want to run in parallel, and then you can evaluate or resolve it. So using these three steps. And so first, like, how do you choose to parallelize your code? They give you many different options. Um, if you're, say, working on Wheeler and you wanted to use all the different cores in one of your nodes, um, multi-core will work well for that. That will just automatically do it for you. But they give you other options as well. And if you run sequential, that allows you also to test if it's in serial as well. OK, so then how do you like parallelize your code? Um, basically, it's really straightforward. You just take the part you want to parallelize and put it within this future object. So say you had this kind of for loop where you're plugging in numbers 1 through 50 and running it in this like function called slow function. So this would be just kind of generating the output into this array here. If you wanted to make this suitable for our future, first choose how you want to parallelize it. In this case, we'll do multi-core. And then this is just... Um, pre-allocating to make it quicker. But then here, down here, all you have to do is add future and then put that around the part you want to parallelize. In this case, that slow function. And so by doing this now, this can be parallelized. But as I mentioned before, it didn't run it yet. And so then you have to then go and use the value function, which then will take that set of commands and then run it in parallel for you. And to give you kind of a visual of how it works, on your R window, you kind of or like your R environment, you could have some function here and you're going to say like run um, one through 10 as your iterative steps and then future. And then it's going to send off all of those into all the different workers you have. And what's really cool about it is it's not only sending that function, but it's also using your global environment that you have loaded in there and other packages or ex, um, objects you've created. So it's kind of running your whole environment on each of those workers. And once they're done, then they um, submit it back to the main process. So you have access to the data there. Um, and one of the main issues with all the other packages is they weren't compatible. Very, very few of them are compatible with Tidyverse 2. And Tidyverse is just like a different way a lot of people code in R now. But the nice thing is Future works very well with it. And someone created just kind of extension of it to work for Tidyverse called the fur package, which is just a play in words of the per package, which is to do iterative processes in Tidyverse. And the nice thing about it is if all you have to do is take those iterative steps you have 
and then just add on future underscore to the front of it. And then it'll take your code that's already, already works and then run it in parallel. So in this case, they're running, we're open to two different sessions. So it would run this in parallel. So this is really nice. And I'm gonna probably implement this for a lot of my code because a lot of these per objects are very convenient to write, but are not necessarily the fastest. And for example, I had a friend who was downloading a bunch of data from GBIF, which gives you kind of data across the world of like where different species are like, and I think he was running his for like two or three days. So if you use HVC, you could speed it up considerably. Um, the other, another nice thing is there's an extension that work well for HPCs um, called future.batchTools. And this allows you to run um, your iterations across multiple nodes. And so this is really nice because it will take each of your iterative steps and then use, it will schedule a job for each of them. And so I was using a lot of this on Wheeler to run different Bayesian models in parallel. And so you just submit it and then, or you just run the line and then it will actually then schedule your jobs for you, kind of like a job array. And then once it's done, it'll bring all the data back into your R window. And so this is very helpful, yeah, for doing like, a, for submitting jobs where you need access to multiple cores for each iteration. And so it also can work for, yeah, PBS and also Slurm. All you have to do besides the other stuff is that you just also create a file which basically says how you want to schedule the jobs. And I have an example of that in my quick bite. Um, when I was running all of these, I, I noticed like some peculiar things were occurring. So I did a lot of speed tests to figure out why in some cases my parallelized code was not any faster or even slower. And one of the things we discovered was that the setup time when it's running the future um, object actually can have a considerable cost, especially with a lot of iterations. So here's a plot of me just running future, so not evaluating it with that value function yet, but just setting up everything. And you can see like even for 100 generations, it can take like 23 or 24 seconds to run. And so I was finding like when I was creating a lot of my early demonstrations that I would get these like very, very small or even in some bizarre cases, slower code that when it was run in parallel. So this is just showing across using two, four, six, eight cores with a hundred iterations. And then each of these iterations takes a quarter of a second to run. So you can see here that it speeds up slightly, but it's actually not that much faster. And so from running more tests, and just is all due to the setup time. So if you looked at the amount of time that setup time was making up the bulk of it. But I, would buy, I was able to find like, if you have iterations that take longer, you actually can get a fair amount of speed up too. So to say, if I set this now to one second, and even if I run it for more iterations up to like 300, you can see that you can still get some kind of speed up to like four X. And from doing these kind of tests, I found that like running very, very slow functions works very well. Not to condone writing like inefficient code, but say you're running a bunch of Bayesian models, this is going to be very helpful for running it because some of these Bayesian models can take like two hours each. This kind of code will be very efficient for handling those kind of problems. Mostly because your setup time isn't very negligible when your each step takes an hour or so. Or, in this case, even 15 seconds. And so I also put in my quick byte, I wrote out this function where, so users can also plug in kind of the parameters of their problem, like how long it takes for each step, it can be like the wait time. And so they can actually kind of play around and see how, how, how much of a benefit they could get uh, by parallelizing their code. So I think this could be helpful before people invest in it if they wanna go down that route. So that's my parallel R tutorial.